Howdy all you delicious people, I'm here today to review Cowboy Bebop the pilot episode. So, of course, this episode of Cowboy Bebop is just to be straight up an adaption from the pilot episode of the original anime. So, it's basically copy and paste, but uh, I really did have uh, some fun with this first episode. I thought it was like... For people that don't know about Cowboy Bebop, you're kind of thrusted in a world that you may not quite understand uh, right off the bat, but like Cowboy Bebop just does that. Like it just kind of drops you in and, uh, and has you just adjust to this world, get to know these characters, and then uh, they introduce more characters. So... Within this episode, I was just kind of thinking, I'm like, are they going to go off and introduce, like, Faye right away? Or are, is there going to be a build-up to that? Is there going to be just both Jet and uh, Spike just kind of the main focus here? Like, are we going to start seeing certain kind of ships that are to be, of course, like, really iconic, like the Swordfish? Because I was like, okay, where is... Uh, where, of course, is Spike's ship? Like, where is the, the swordfish? But then I'm like, oh, okay, so they're basically covering everything. They're covering all their bases in this episode. And so, uh, yeah, I really just had a lot of fun with this episode. Uh, more than likely, I may not know the Cowboy Bebop uh, specifics because it's been a while since I've watched the show. And so, like, I'm starting to get used to these certain characters again, or re-getting uh, back into them. Because, like, I had watched, like, the pilot, uh, or the early episodes of Cowboy Bebop. And then I, I also had seen the movie of Cowboy Bebop. And then also I had seen, like, episodes kind of here sporadically here and there. Uh, cause one of my friends that I knew was like, Hey man, check out this cowboy bebop thing. And I'm like, okay, don't know what that is. So, uh, like we started watching like cowboy bebop. I'm like, okay, like I don't really like, I think when I first originally saw a cowboy bebop episode, didn't understand what it was, but like, I was like, okay, this is, there's something interesting about this. This kind of has some uh kind of firefly kind of flavor if people uh don't know what this is at all uh we have uh characters who are to be these kind of space bounty hunters and so they go off and they start claiming uh these uh these bounties from certain police departments and the thing that i thought was interesting right off the bat is I was like, okay, when is Jet going to start um, rattling off with some detective at this base? Because that's normally what Jet always does. Uh, we also have it to where Spike and Jet are built as these, like, these guys have no money. Like, they're just kind of scraping by. Like, that, I could buy that from the anime, and that's the thing that I could like, where... Both of them are weirdly eating peppers. Because <laughs> I guess that's probably all that they have. Like it's uh, it looked like onions or peppers or whatever. And I'm like, well, yeah, that kind of like they are to be characters consistently scraping by. Uh, but it seems that in this episode, we have Jet who is kind of needing to put some money together to afford his uh, daughter a... Uh, a gift of sorts because I guess her birthday is coming up soon uh, so and I I think I remember we get to see Jet's daughter I think somewhere later in the show where she ends up having this like plucky dog at her side uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that like I know there's some young girl that ends up arriving on the ship and is to have this like red hair and goggles on and correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a while since I've seen Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so, but yeah, so it's interesting to see, like, that we're already incorporating a lot of stuff in this first episode. 
Uh, we're also like incorporating interesting visuals, of course, because this show is to just be like, hey man, we're gonna punch up these visuals so people can show how much effort we're really putting into this. And it's just really just is like, dang, like the like they it looks like they put a lot of money and effort into this movie or this show so far. So we'll see how that all breaks down. And I'm invested. I, li I like this. Uh, it's I it doesn't want to re have me invest in uh, the anime and have to compare the two because uh, I don't want to do that kind of effort because it's been a while. But uh, I know a lot of people will probably compare the two, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, so, with that said, uh, really just this first episode is to go and focus on these things called, uh, or these little, uh, these little gadgets called, like, like these devices that go into someone's eye and is to be called the red eye. And so it's basically taking from the pilot episode of Cowboy Bebop and just kind of adapting it here. So for a lot of people that probably did enjoy the original Cowboy Bebop animated series, they can enjoy it in a slightly different variation. So, uh, yeah. Check this out without a doubt. Uh, very visually interesting. And it doesn't really matter if you're just kind of dropped in with these characters. It's a good enough show. Uh, like right off the bat, I would just say like there's some cool things being mixed in here. Uh, Spike is to be very uh, much uh, combative like character. And uh, so like everything is to be just kind of copied and paste at some point. Uh, the visuals are to look just like the anime. The even theme song is to be just like the anime. And so everything is to feel uh, very quite similar. So with that said, let's just go into that double five time territory. Check this out on Netflix. Uh, if you're even not a Cowboy Bebop fan, uh, check this out just because it's like it's a fun show. It looks really fun for even a person who isn't a fan. Check this show out regardless. Um, you'll get to be intrigued by these characters. It has that kind of normal, like, uh, I would probably call this like a, uh, a bounty hunter show, but it has that kind of like Firefly or like uh, possibly like a, a Star Trek kind of feel. Uh, where we have, like, if uh, Star Trek had a much smaller ship, <laughs> like, that would basically be this. Um, so, yeah, like, just tossing a bunch of things out there that might be somewhat similar to this. Uh, but with that said, because there's just a lot of these kind of, like, small crew ship kind of shows or movies or something out there, so check it out. So without a doubt, let's go into that double five. Let's just go into spoilers about this one. Spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time you spoil this episode. So the beginning of this is to pop off in a casino. And we, of course, have Spike who is to go and flip this coin. And I'm like, okay, because uh, he's to have these headphones on. He's to come out and go on and try to take down this group uh, who is to have this leader who is uh, Tanaka. And so these guys are to be stealing from this casino and all of a sudden we have Spike who is to be coming on in, flipping his coin and then kicking butt. Uh, we have Jet coming in also like assisting him and supposedly the whole thing of this is Tanaka is to definitely be left alive but supposedly Jet is to also want to get one of the people that work with Tanaka to get some kind of side coin going on. But sadly, uh, Spike was to not be able to like cater to Jet's wishes. And they at least leave uh, Tanaka alive. 
There is to be one random guy who ends up going into the bathroom while putting together this heist. And so we have Spike who's like, who goes to the bathroom during a heist? Like, ugh. So we end up taking these guys out. And so they end up creating a airlock of sorts where uh, we have these characters who rip through one of these walls. And now all of a sudden people are getting sucked in uh out of this environment because we don't realize that this actually is to be a casino that's in space because of course it actually has uh its own actual title which is to be the spiders from mars and so they figure out how to press some wild random lever that is to go and seal off this one part of the room but then we end up getting the outside of Spiders of Mars and showcasing that, um, like, what this building looks like from this perspective, which I think it actually looks a lot better than the anime. No offense to diehard anime Cowboy Bebop fans. Uh, so, because immediately I'm like, why does this building look so familiar? But I couldn't figure out what the name of it was. But I'm like, this building weirdly looks familiar to me. Uh, because, again, I've seen, like, bits and pieces of the show. Uh, or I've seen the 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 first early run of this show, but, uh, like, my memory isn't that good. So uh, I just really just remembered the visuals of the characters and the, the ships that they were to have. And, like, certain other kind of random things that just seemed familiar to me. So, both uh, Spike and... Both Spike and Jet are to go uh, to collect this bounty for this guy. And so, Jet is continuing to go off and is to like mention about their like their next uh bounty the next thing that they're going to do after they drop this guy off and because all of this is riding on jet going and getting a certain present for his girl and so they're looking for their next like their next uh money making scheme and so when Jed is to go off to make it to the place to dock to deliver this bounty, uh, like Jed is to ask these people if there's going to be some fine or some like bit of money he's going to have to pay if he pees off to the side somewhere. And they're like, well, yeah, like we take that out of your pay regardless. Don't you know the policy <laughs> that we have? Like, read the fine print. So, Jet is to be coming in on, I think, uh, the ship called Bebop. Because I think the other ship, which is to be called the Hammerhead, or something like that. Like, it's a much bigger, goofy-looking ship. And so, like, I'm like, is was this Bebop? It, like, it has to probably be Bebop. It makes sense for this ship to come in. And have it be Bebop because Cowboy Bebop. It has to open this ship or open this episode. So we have these guys going and delivering this uh, this bounty. And so Jet is to go and run into uh, uh, Chalmers. Chalmers? Sure. And... So it seems that Jet and Chomber are kind of reminiscing about old times and kind of what Jet's doing now and kind of bringing in this bounty. And he's like, oh, hey, yeah, that's great. Uh, so because Jet, like, Jet is to always go into these places and find these, uh, like, these people. And, and, like, that's his, like, M.O. That's his, like, thing that he always does. He always has some, like, cop friend somewhere. Uh, where he had probably worked with them at some point. Um, I don't know what it is about Jet. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's always just, but 
Um, it's also kind of funny that they kind of set up that Jet has a robot arm. And so Spike is to make fun of him about it, about how, like, uh, his arm is, uh, isn't all that natural. <laughs> because, like, they're really just trying to press that, like, they're, they're trying to help people understand these characters. And mentioning that, uh... That Jet is to, at some points in time, not exactly be 100% human just kind of helps us understand this character more. So, so they dump off this, uh, this bounty and it seems like they are to go and take off certain fees. Uh, because, of course, Jet, uh, like docking here and so on and so forth, they took off some certain pay and stuff like that. So... We have both Jet and Spike going back off to their ship to go and just, uh, like, eat their peppers and, and figure out what their next bounty is. So, their next bounty is them going off to Tijuana, and so Spike is just like, I'm not going to Tijuana! Like, no! Like, the last time he went there, supposedly he had gotten stabbed trying to go and buy a chero so he's like no I'm not, I'm not going like no you're not gonna make me go and so jet is like well hey like i want to go and buy my daughter this lavish birthday present and i'm like dude you guys are just so just like god you guys are just barely skimming by and we have jet who is to just have these big ambitions for this birthday gift and like, Jet is to kind of guilt trip Spike of, like, well, hey, if, like, we don't go and get this bou this 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 bounty, like, I'm going to have to go and get this, like, lesser um, lesser gift that I guess is to be the, the most popular thing that's out right now. But still, like, it's a lesser gift. And so Spike is like, oh, okay, okay, what is the thing going on with Tijuana? So, uh... Weirdly, they want to go and do this Tijuana job, but supposedly they find out once they get there that the syndicate is there, and so they're a little worried about that because normally they avoid uh, jobs that are to be with the syndicate because it seems like Spike it has to or has some previous experience with the syndicate. So we find out that the bounty is a guy named uh, Ozimov. Azimov, you're going to realize a lot of times there's going to be points in time when you can probably hear a name a million times, but quickly a forgettable thing. Um, and I was like, but where's Faye? Like, I, like, it was so hilarious how when I was like, when I was watching this first pilot episode, I'm like, give me some of that Faye. When are we going to get Faye? Like, <laughs> and then when we get Faye in this pilot episode, I'm like, yes. <laughs> so... Uh, Asimov is to be mixed, uh, with this girl named, uh, Katarina, and so that is to be the bounty, but we end up finding out that both this couple is to actually be, like, there's a bounty for either one of them, and so we find out that Faye is to be wanting to go after Katarina, and is going to let Spike go and get the uh, Azimov. Azimov. So, Azimov goes to Tijuana, and so he is going to this one bar to try and get rid of this, uh, this red eye, this drug, that the new drug that's going on, or going off. So, the guy who is to accept this red eye is just like, well, like, I need you to test it before you give it to me. I gotta make sure that this is a legit thing. And so, coincidentally, as uh, Ozimov is going and trying this drug, we just conveniently have these guys who come in who are to take down Ozimov. And so... 
We find out that these red eyes is to cause this kind of brute strength like thing where we just kind of see this guy like rampaging or berserking through people and brutally killing them. So Katarina is to of course be pregnant, so I'm just kind of worried. I'm like, how are they gonna do this story? Uh, with a pregnant girl and plus she's to be like this bounty and so I'm just kind of interesting interested to see how this plays out so we just have Spike that is on Tijuana just going through person to person to person showing a picture of this guy asking us if anyone has seen him and so there, of course, is to be these old guys that are to just say, oh, yeah, like, we've seen that guy. And so uh, Spike is like, well, great, where did he head? <clears throat> and they're like, well, like, uh, like he headed, like, in one way or another, they basically show him to this hospital. So Spike is to go to this hospital to find just bug kiss nothing. And... And it seems like uh, Asimov is to go and get his, like, his wound healed while just having a gun to this nurse. So, uh, so Spike continues to go and look around, finding Bub Kiss nothing. And so uh, Spike is uh, just kind of looking around and is to see some gal who's trying to light a smoke, this pregnant woman was lighting a cigarette and so spike goes and he's like oh hey like yeah i can help you out with that and so he starts to light the cigarette and he's like well yeah like you know that these are unhealthy for you right and katarina's like well yeah it's like <laughs> but what good does he know and so all of a sudden both uh, him and her are starting to talk and have this line of dialogue where uh, they end up talking about Mars and uh, Katarina wants to go to Mars at some point and, and supposedly uh, Spike was born on Mars and so on and so forth. So... This, this whole dialogue is to go on to have Spike uh, mention about this girl that he was to have at some point that he had dreamt about, but then woke up. Because when this girl is to ask him about a girl that he was to have had before, he just mentioned that he had one in some dream, but he woke up. Really giving us this... Uh, dream sequence before which kind of just seemed like really goofy or a jar like a weird kind of sequence that had uh spike falling over uh i think julia if i'm wrong you can correct me uh and so spike was going and uh seeing like pictures and all kinds of stuff uh upon this dream sequence and kissing this girl and all kinds of things and then a shot being fired and whatever the whole goofy weird dream sequence so on and so forth but anyways so pushing on so spike uh is to all of a sudden be met by Faye, and Faye is to tell spike hey like this is my bounty get the heck out of here, this one's mine, so on and so forth, which leads to both Faye and Spike fighting it out, and Faye is to have this, these small daggers, I'm like, uh, like cool. Uh, so, but we have at some point where Spike just outwits Faye, and then is to bring her onto the Bebop ship, to cuff her to some toilet, letting uh, Katarina just go free. So 
the funny thing is Spike didn't even realize that that girl was Katarina. Like he like he didn't even put two and two together and Faye had to tell him about that. So uh so now Faye is to just kind of make a joke because she's cuffed to this toilet and she's to tell these guys, hey, like, could you have cuffed me to a bigger toilet? <laughs> Like, could you, like, yeah, like, hey, man, like, uh, so, Jet and, uh, Jet and Spike are to realize that the syndicate is here, and Spike is still Jet, like, hey, man, like, so we're gonna leave, right? Because we don't deal with syndicate, and Jet is like, but yeah, but that bounty, and Spike's like, yeah, I get it, but no, we're leaving, and Jet's like, but, and so Spike is like, okay, fine, we'll do this. And so Faye is, is shouting at them to like, hey, 50-50, like, I get the girl, you get the guy, like, we'll, we'll work together. And it's just like, no, Faye, like, we're going to find that, like, Spike and Faye are kind of like these, uh, like brother and sister kind of duo where like, they're always just kind of like, they have that kind of, God, I just want to punch this person kind of mentality about them where they just hate one another. And, but they always, they work well with one another, but they just like, they just don't work well. So, and they always have to give one another crap because that's the usual case. So, so we push on and so Spike and Jet are to of course go and uh, take both the swordfish and, uh, and Jet's bike. And they go off looking for um, Katarina and and uh, Ozimov, and so they uh, they at some point find them going uh, into this one uh, place to try to find a ship to make their way to Mars, and so. Uh, Jet and Spike get the drop on them, and so, uh, like, I feel like I'm, I lost, like, a huge gap of something somewhere. I don't know. Anyways, like, I feel like I, like, I forgot a huge gap of something. Um, oh, well. Well, we're gonna keep on going. So... Spike and uh, Jet make it here, and so we really have it where Spike is trying to save Katrina, and like uh, Ozimov is gonna just end the way he ends. Like we immediately assume he's going to die here, and so all of a sudden the syndicate is to arrive to just kind of put like this to be much more of like a standoff kind of thing where it's like, Hey man, like everybody's after this one guy and this one girl, but like the syndicate is to want basically everyone because they also want spike. Uh, so we'll see how that all just plays out, uh, in future, um, future episodes. So, so there's to be this kind of gunfire and everybody's blasting away. We have Ozimoth who goes and takes his red eye and is to uh, be not so easily beaten by, <laughs> by Spike. And so what happens is uh, Katarina ends up getting shot in the chest and we're thinking, oh, blood's going to come out because pregnancy. But instead, we find out that this girl had collected a bunch of red eye into her chest. And so when her dress gets shot, 
all these containers of this red eye spills out. And so we're like, oh, okay. So, so Ozymoth ends up getting, uh, getting shot. And so now both, uh, like within this gunfire and everything going on, uh, uh, Katarina and Ozymoth go onto this plane and are trying to make it out of, uh, out of airspace. And so Spike is to follow after them in the swordfish. And so what happens is that we continue to see that these people aren't going to make it all that far. That there are certain people like a border patrol for space trying to turn these people around and saying like, Hey, like, don't like, like it's a roadblock kind of thing going on. So Spike is telling, uh, Katarina to turn back that this is a pointless endeavor that like, Hey, just turn yourselves in. And Katarina is like, well, you know what you said before about that whole, like, uh, it was time for me to wake up kind of thing. Same thing here. So, Katarina pushes on to have her plane get shot shot up because you can't say the word shot down because technically this is in space, so that doesn't make sense. So Katarina's ship got obliterated, and so Spike is to turn back because that's all he can really do. So really, that's just how like things just kind of uh, fade into black, so to speak. Uh, but, like, at the tail end of this episode, we have uh, one of the Syndicate members coming back to his boss and is to, of course, uh, like, ask this guy's boss. Uh, and I'm trying to see here... Um, if I'm going to try to get this correctly, probably not. Uh, so there is to be this white haired assassin that I need to know the name of soon. Uh, that seems to be uh, told that uh, one of the people that they are looking for is to still be alive. And so because this guy is to utter this person's name, we have this white, long-haired, uh, uh, assassin-looking-like character going and chopping this guy's head off. And it's just like, well, I guess if he really, truly is alive, then we need to go and look for him. So that's just how the episode is to end off with this guy going and... Uh, kissing, uh, I guess, Spike's wife that I guess is still alive. So, yeah, I guess this is just the progression to have Spike get his wife back is where we are to go here. Uh, but again, um, memory is a little foggy about, uh, like, really just towards the tail end of here of who these people are and couldn't quite see who it was on IMDb. So I'm like, er. So when we get into other episodes, I'll get other names right. But like, at least I try to get most of the names and most of the ship names and whatever. So we'll get to it. We'll get to a better understanding of this, this show as we go along. It's been a while for me, for Cowboy Bebop. So uh, yeah, it's also kind of funny because Spike, like he doesn't have green hair <laughs> like i was like why doesn't he have green hair like Faye has purple hair like jet is bald and has that same kind of like uh like facial hair as he does uh in the show but like why isn't why isn't spike's hair green like were they just like hey man i'm not going to dye my hair i'll i'll grow my hair out but i'm not going to dye my hair green <laughs> and so they're like oh, okay sure yeah i don't know like, they could have, like, they really could have just had him wear a wig if that was, like, a problem. But, like, I guess they probably, maybe they screen tested it and they're like, no. Like, let's just have him have, like, his hair, 
But I don't know. Maybe I uh, like I like maybe there is some kind of like maybe Spike's hair wasn't completely green, but I don't know. Maybe it was just some kind of like green shading or something. But like I don't know. I thought like uh, Spike's hair was definitely green. But maybe they just did like this this way for because it just looked better uh, after testing some certain colors and so on and so forth. So they couldn't probably get a hair color right. So they're just like, dude, just go with natural, uh, natural color. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here because this is about an hour long episode. Plus, I'm kind of at the tail end of my day where I should have went and took a rest hours ago. So. Uh, just trying to get a lot of content done today, so I'm going to go out of my way to get the heck out of here. Uh, if you like this show, let me know in the comments below. If you just hate it because it feels like a straight-up adaption from the anime, let me know also. Let me know anything about how you feel about Cowboy Bebop. Uh, I know this just came out today, and so I'll probably be putting this out tomorrow because I know that I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff out tomorrow because I prepped uh, all of this stuff. So feels great that I have like got so much stuff done uh but I still have prob probably like one more thing of video or something to do still but anyways I'm gonna get out of here bye everybody bye everybody